around here, start thinking back, what does scale factor mean to you? And we spent a lot of time working with scale factors in various contexts, but what does scale factor mean? What are you going to do with that value to that triangle? So I'm seeing, uh, walking around, I'm seeing some really good things as far as how you're showing your work. I've got kids who are actually redrawing that right triangle and putting in values for each problem. And then down at the one for number two, one for number three. I see two. We'll go three more minutes here. Okay, so when you get up today for your silent appointment, you're going to lock eyes with that person. You're going to greet that person for school. So why don't we just do it seriously? Just a really cheesy uh, uh, father, dad. Uh, old guy, just high five. Make sure you greet that person. Share your answers. But again, when you have bad, uh, when, when we, we share, you're gonna make sure that you're ready for pass. So I make that sound for me. Greet. Share your answers. Hey. Cold call here. They don't know what's coming. I'm going to start with one person again. They're going to share an answer on this first triangle with our scale factor. Oh, randomly, let's pick somebody to pass it on. Cyan, start us off. What length are you going to share with us? Is it going to be this diagonal one, the uh, vertical one, or the horizontal one? Vertical. Vertical. What is that going to be? 16. Yeah, what label would you add to that? Uh, centimeters. Centimeters. Very good. Pass it on, please. You see, are we going to do the, the di diagonal one or the uh, horizontal one? The diagonal one. What you got? I got 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters. So we pass it on, please, for the horizontal one. Uh, here. 12 centimeters. 12. If you got the answers 20, 12, and 16, show me with your feet, please, that you got those answers. So now let's go on to the second one. Vertical. Vertical. Good. For all, what you got? Two. Two. What label would you add there? In this Problem. case, that scale factor was one half. If you ended up with two and a half, or two and five tenths, one and five tenths, and two, show me the drum roll that you ended up with. Those. Very nice job. So, shout out, shout out. I want to hear from all of you. What happens to a shape when a scale factor is bigger than one? It increases. It gets bigger. It grows. Sweet. It gets bigger. It grows. We're going to use the wheel, the random wheel. What happens to a shape when the value is smaller than... <laughs> Let's find out what does happen. I was kind of hoping you were going to get called on. Maybe be like, what happens? You have things to be successful. You need a pencil, a calculator. Turn in your opener and on your way back. Why don't you come see me? Go ahead. Ticketing the door is done today. We're using scale factor today to help us. The scale factor is also going to be thought about and talked about uh, when we really start our project. And today, we're going to be using some technology to help us with the Wong family. We're going to be using some conversation to help us with the Wong family. And we're going to be learning a little bit more about uh, some of the figures. And then, like I said, we are going to begin our stretching. Your name is Mug Wong. Say hi, Mug Wong. <laughs> so this is Mug Wump, and instead of graphing Mug Wump, we're not going to work on that skill today. We're going to work on another skill that you'll learn about as we, we introduce you to the family. But today when we look at the rest of Mug's family, we're going to compare everybody back to Mug. The question is, and we're going to use a reading to help us, okay, remember I read the uh, unhighlighted, you read the highlighted, you ready? Compare. Compare the characters to Mug which are the imposters don't belong in Mug's family. Explain. So I'm going to show you four family members. You're going to do a very silent, like a funeral, like a, a museum, like a, a library. You're going to write down who are the imposters, who don't belong in his family, and jot down a little bit why. 
and then we'll do a shout out to, to see who you think is. So here's the family. Make it large. Again, this is quiet activity. Do a little quick reflection. What does imposter mean? Oh, I'm not. Like, no, 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 no. <gasps> Make it quiet. About 30 more seconds. 30 seconds. Looks like a lot of you are ready. Just 30 more seconds. <coughs> okay. Shout out. The question is, who is an imposter? Anybody else? Explain why you think Glove is the imposter. Sophie, why is Glove the imposter? Um, his eyes are more like ovals instead of circles. Ooh, so you're looking at the sort of That's what I do. Ooh. Can you show me some snaps if you agree with her idea, if you thought that same thing? Okay. Uh, Zug! Why is Zug the imposter? Nathan, why is Zug the imposter? Based on what we just did, about scale factors, okay. I took that into consideration. The original, I'm guessing that these are all going to be scale amplified or, you know, add more or less by scale factor. So this is so mug, I, I can't see that well, but I think it's seven. So the glug has two, but, it, but on the bottom number it says 15. Meaning the scale factor, meaning scale factor, and this thing is completely off. So I think that's why that one's the imposter. So he started applying some math, and maybe what too much. So here is what you're going to do. We're going to do guided practice. And so guided practice is this. I'm going to show you what I would like you to do, only because once I turn you loose on the computers, just stop listening. Pair. Zog to mug one. We're going to compare the angles to the side legs. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to pop up mug one. Tells you the name. There's mug. Boom. Easy. And who's the other one? Zog. So, okay. So mug pops up. Oh. Zog. Says Zog right there. Okay. So. I know. I know. So you're going to compare the angles. So here's how you do it. It's really cool. And you and your partner are going to do this in a moment. You're going to click on the angle. And uh, let's. Let's select this one here. You click on the vertex. Write that down. Write that down. Zug's angle measure. Three, you are going to do. Question four, your partner is going to do. They're going to do their own comparisons. And then you're going to kind of trade some, some work here for time's sake. You're both going to do question five together. You're going to need a computer for each kid. You're going to need your paper. You need a pencil. You are going to make another sound appointment, but it can't be with who you are already with. I don't want to see Cyan work with me again. And I don't want to see who else it always works together. Uh, Jamie and all hundred. Girls, good choices. Rock it up, five minutes left, five minutes left. Are they an imposter or not? And start formulating your reasons for why they are imposters or why they belong in the family. In one minute and 45 seconds, we are going to share out using musical shares, so make sure you're ready to participate. You're going to do your walk dance. Remember the bottom half is kind of walking, the top half is grooving. When the music stops, turn to the person next to you and share for our first character. Make sure you share some data and answer the question, is it an imposter? When the music starts up again, you're going to kind of dance around again. When the music stops, then we're going to share our information to Bob. Make sure you talk about, is Bug an imposter? We're going to do a third rotation, and when the music starts up again, you're going to move around.
school call. So uh, I'm going to ask that your computers are, are uh, uh, this need to be open, but let's focus on the characters at hand. Now, when you answer, I'm looking for a seventh or eighth grade answer of why you think somebody's an imposter or somebody is part of the family. Okay, so just double check. And again, I'm going to use a lot of cold calling here, so please don't be too anxious. One. Lug and lug. Cold call. Jamie, is Lug an imposter or is Lug part of the family? What do you think? Can you say the first part one more time so we can hear it up here? Very good. Very well said. I think Lug is an imposter because it doesn't think to buy something you can't get the Lug side. Angle measures are different. Same values. Well, should we give her the firework? Should we give her the firework? Yeah. Ready? Well, should we practice it once? Here we go. Yeah. Bug walk. Bug walk compared to mug walk. Azael. Bug walk. Imposter or family member. Bugs. Sideline. Should we give him the well done? Remember the well done? Yeah. Maybe. Put it out. Put it out. Bug is a family member, and it is for the reasons Azael said. Zog Womp, and you're going to shout out, and you're going to make sure it's loud enough so that they can hear you in the room next door. You're going to say one of two words. It's going to be imposter <coughs> or family. Don't say in three, two, one. Is family. Any rights to say I want to tell us why it is in fact family? I see two rights to say. Anybody want to tell us why it's family? Frog, tell us why it's family. Because mug's silent and rug's silent both have common multiple. Woo! Introduced a new piece there. Say it one more time so those who uh, who were thinking about what's next can hear you. Say it one more time, young lady. A uh, mug's silent and rug's silent both have common multiples. We're going to go ahead and do a moment of silence now. So this is the last part we're going to do. And you're going to take and write this down on your post-it. When you're done, you're going to put it on the door. Let's go ahead and read this one all together. So follow along. Here we go. How can you determine if two shapes are similar? So think about the things you heard from Najad, Azael, Jamie, Vanessa, your conversations, what you wrote down, the website, the values, the data. How can you tell if two shapes are similar? Again, when you are finished, put it on here. <laughs> 